Hello, my astrology friends. This is Lada from astrolada.com, and this is an update about the epochal and rare Uranus, North Node, and Mars conjunction in Taurus. We're going to be talking how it will influence the world, the events, how to prepare, also how to influence people on a personal level. If you want to hear specifically for your sign, check out my video for July 2022, where I speak how this conjunction will influence each of the 12 signs. I'll put a link below in it, about it in the video, but we'll speak now what to expect from the world events and also on a personal level for everyone, but generally. So it's big, you know, that the last time this conjunction happened in Taurus, it is Uranus, Mars, the North Node together in Taurus of the 18th degree. The last time they met at the same place in the in the sign of Taurus, the constellation of Aries currently as well, was uh, during the time of Alexander the Great in the year 325 before Christ. So more than 2,300 years ago, those three planets were joined together in the sign. How rare is that? Imagine, actually, Uranus North Node conjunctions happen approximately every 16, 17 years, and we'll speak about them, but something huge that specifically in this position that happened so many years ago, and that was the time when the Hellenistic era was laid by Alexander the Great, by taking over uh, and connecting Europe with Asia, taking over big territories in Asia, basically starting a new cultural epoch, so to speak. So we're on the verge of something huge again, something totally new. And we're not gonna see it evolve specifically now at the end of July during the Uranus North Node conjunction. It's, not, it's gonna take more than a day, but over the next 14, 15 years, you would see after this conjunction how the world is so new, <laughs> just like after Alexander the Great. And it becomes more connected as well because Alexander the Great connected uh, the European cultures and brought values from Europe to Asia and the Asian culture to the values uh, to the European uh, culture. Plus, this, is, this was the path through which astrology came from Babylon into, uh, he, thanks to Alexander the Great, astrology, between the East and the West was connected and there was a huge resurgence of astrological knowledge. So there might be something good for us here. Those conjunctions always signify something big for astrology because Uranus rules astrology as we know. Um, but uh, also Alexander the Great restored the path, the silk path, the connections as well, the trades between cultures. So the, the, the known world then became a bigger family with interchange values. There's something about, um, you know, Uranus is about connecting people on a very large scale and uh, allowing for trade and trade opportunities and uh, any kind of through socializing, through connecting to others to happen. There will be, of course, some difficult things, thanks to this triple conjunction, because it's very explosive. We're going to have Uranus, the planet of new innovations, changes, sudden disruptions, with Mars, the planet of aggressions and violence, and with the North Node, which magnifies everything, plus North Node always brings something new. And actually, both those three planets, Uranus, North Node, and Mars, they connected to new, something new. They carry the energy of something new, innovation, invention. And interestingly enough, just quickly and briefly, I looked at the last time Uranus and the North Node joined together. Well, it was not in uh, the same sign, but the last time was in 2007. And I looked a few years backwards as well, every time they conjoined in different signs than now. But this was a year of rapid technological boom. A lot of pivotal inventions uh, and companies and uh, things were created that changed reality. So 2007 was the year when uh, Twitter became, uh, when Twitter, Facebook and iPhone were launched. Before that, they were not famous. So that's when they exploded on the market and iPhone changed <laughs> and Android was launched that year. These were those devices that changed our life. <laughs> and uh, even historians are saying that something happened after the year 2007 where the biggest changes in technological uh, advancement, very quickly society changed. So you see such, this will be a very pivotal year. 
And you see, whoever caught that early opportunity, because Uranus and Rahu always bring very fast opportunities that can go viral, that can take over the world by storm. And whoever was first on that wave within the next two, three years, now they're the leaders in those. So if you, if you, if you like an astrologer, I made my first YouTube video a few years after YouTube was released in 2007. So if you were one of the first ones to cash out or grab on those new ideas that are coming now, it can define your uh, well-being for many years ahead. So there'll be a lot of opportunities, those of you who have a flair to fill the trends because Uranus rules the collective trends. And those of you who are naturally attuned to those things, you very quickly, a lot of big opportunities, financial material for public uh, influence as well, will be created new such companies, new such um, and, and undertakings will be created right now. So watch out, starting now this year and the next two, three years is when the biggest and most advanced and um, uh, companies and uh, innovations that will take the world over by storm, just like it happened in 2007, Twitter, Kindle, Facebook, um, iPhone, <laughs> and, you know, all of those huge companies that currently they are ruling the world <laughs> through which I'm connecting with you as well. But now there'll be a new wave of such companies or such platforms for con connectivity for others 2,300 years ago, it was Alexander the Great that did it. He was, <laughs> he was their social media connecting cultures. Now it's a technologist. And the last conjunction in 2007 happened in the sign of Pisces, but in the constellation of Aquarius, which we know, which is the constellation behind, which we know is very much connected about technologies. And I just decided to look a few years back, previous conjunctions. And I went back and there was another conjunction in 2000, in 1991. You see around 16 years difference. 1991 uh, was a, a big year of, uh, first of all, it was the Gulf War. So you'll notice that Uranus North Node conjunctions are very noted for um, wars as well, for military mm, explosions, bombs, Uranus rules, all of those things. And uh, because Uranus also rules the collective um, mood, so to speak, and uh, with Mars, it becomes very explosive. With the North Node, it becomes very rebellious. In 1991 is when uh, the Russian um, Confederation, the US USSR, fell apart. So there was huge political changes again during Uranus North Node conjunction. And uh, that's where, you know, basically the Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, there were a lot of air strikes and bombings, a lot of uh, protests, like all of Eastern Europe was out protesting, the Russia, uh, the, from USSR, they became just Russia. Um, so you see something big about rebellions, about um, protesting, protests, people taking up to arms, people, or not necessarily becoming aggressive, but they, they were literally tearing down walls, the <laughs> iron wall, so to speak, fell down in 1991. Because Uranus and North Node, they want to break the old structures. That's what Uranus is. Uranus is enemy of Saturn, structures that exist from before. And Rahu enhances that Uranian energy of rebellion, innovation, breaking old structures, putting a total end of the past. And this is, you know, we can expect, we're seeing a lot of changes already happening, but just looking back through history, it's very, just think back of those things that happen and watch, you know, something similar, not always the same. Of course, it never repeats the same way, but something similar. Then what else happened in 1991? Another huge, as I told you, it's either kind of wars and rebellions that this conjunction <clears throat> and revolutions that they bring or huge uh, innovations. 1991 was the year when the World Wide Web went public. Didn't that change all our lives and getting goosebumps? You know, people go, 2007, the social media explosion comes, 1991, the previous conjunction, World Wide Web goes online for everyone to have access released. The first GSM call is made. So GSM, the cell connection. Oh, what a huge innovation. Uh, of course, Soviet Union collapses. 
uh, massive demonstrations, civil wars around the world. Another thing that comes is alternative rock, grunge, Nirvana, <laughs> 1991. You see, there's something about a rocky, like a more rough energy. It's masculine, Uranus with Mars and the North Node. Uh, and maybe you'll notice such trends because it's happening in the sign of Taurus of music. That's more kind of a rocky, grungy music. Um, I would say it's not going to be the same like before, but innovative. Some new style of music will appear as well. That is that symbolizes rebellion. And what was Nirvana? Smells like teen spirit about rebellion. Some new groups of music about rebellion. Then I wanted to move even further back. What happened during other Uranus Raffle? Yeah, previous. The previous one before 91 was in 1976 in Scorpio. Guess what? First Apple computer <laughs> was invented then. First floppy disk invented. First space shuttle. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps again. These are huge inventions that come into use for everyone. And uh, again, we're in such pivotal times. Whoever catches that way, they'll come out billionaires, trillionaires, or very powerful social influencers, whether they'll do it through technology, whether they use it by uh, affiliating themselves with the right platforms or the right movements. It, it's huge because it's going the next 17 years of this wave of innovation will be dictated by what comes out around this year, next year. Then I went even further back, 1946. So I went through all the 2000, through the 20th century conjunctures of Uranus and Raku. Guess what came out in 1946? The Hubble telescope. Again, Uranus is about space and innovations. Guess what else came out? The credit card was invented. Yes, you heard me, the credit card. And it's gonna be especially relevant. There will be some big change that's happening with money that's already happening with the monetary system, with the currencies. And there was also the transistor, the supersonic planes were invented and so on. And then I decided to see, okay, when was the last time Uranus and Rahu, the North Node, were together in Taurus? Not with Mars. With Mars, the three of them, we saw it was during Alexander the Great. Plus, interestingly enough, around that time, they had a conjunction with Mars in Taurus. The three of them, 2,300 years ago, was when the first uh, leather money was created by a Chinese emperor. Around that time, so the coming, you see Taurus energy is something to do with big changes with money and the monetary system. The first paper money or leather money, they did it from the hinds of a buck. That's why they even say that now, that's why we call it bucks money because the first money came from the, the buck of a buck, <laughs> of a deer skin. Uh, and uh, I don't know, it's coming on the next level. Now it's going to go digital, very likely. Whether you like it and no, it's going this way. Money is not going to be paper over the next 17 years. Starting from this year, there'll be a total digitalization of uh, the money. And uh, you have to be, and, and there'll be a lot of companies that spring out. I know there's a lot of cryptos and whatever, but very likely they'll try to use a centralized one because during this conjunction currently, Saturn is squaring the Uranus, Mars, and North Node. So the innovation will be controlled. Saturn, hierarchically, Saturn is controlled. And there will be a big resistance from the public. Square aspect means, mm, no, <laughs> I don't like it. Saturn is the old things in Aquarius. Aquarius also rules uh, the people, the big masses of people. And Saturn Day is like, they're resisting. They want. They don't want those very quick changes are coming. You can avoid them, but there'll be a big pullback or let's say resistance from the people. Aquarius is the people. Saturn is. They want more. They want control over things and to be more traditional. You know, they they don't like the change. But also Saturn represents hierarchical structures of control. So they'll very likely, whatever those very fast innovations, Mars with Uranus, Rahu, you wake up and on the next morning, well, maybe not overnight, but they'll be like, okay, one world currency or whatever. Uh, of course, it can be treated by a big crisis. And we have to talk about the economic crisis that it's very likely till the end of the year will be, you know, the inflation, the hyperinflation that we're seeing, you see, Taurus rules money uh, and resources and supplies and food. And Uranus with Rahu with the North Node is very unstable, plus prices are rising. In my 2000, 
in my 2022 video, which I made uh, nine months ago, I said, this year there'll be a hyperinflation. Expect the prices of things to really rise, where we're like 40, 50% the prices of things have risen. Um, because of this very explosive conjunction in the sign of money, Taurus, um, well, of course, the governments will try to hold it under control because Saturn is squaring it, so it doesn't collapse <laughs> fully, but uh, it will be at the same time, there is very powerful um, innovations that will be happening in the money that is very much controlled as well, that is very much, you know, because Saturn participates there, that will be regulated, as I said. And remember that whenever the North Node is always the South Node is on the opposite sign. They're always, you know, South Node weakens or creates a crisis. And remember in the year 2020, it was in Sagittarius and the year 2021, it was in Sagittarius. So universities closed down, churches, Sagittarius rules that not to mention, foreign travel was out of the question. <laughs> um, now it's in Scorpio. Scorpio is everything that comes from under the earth. And Scorpio is also people savings in banks, in hedge funds, in pension funds. Well, this is being weakened. Your life, lifelong savings in banks, in such institutions, they will help. It's, it's very sad to see that while prices rose up half, you know, 30, 40%. Plus, Scorpio rules anything that comes from underground, like petrol and gas, the resources from underground. So there is a crisis, you know. And I, I thought maybe the price will go down because it's south north, but no, actually, it's the whole industry is in a crisis right now with gas, with petrol. I mean, have a bill here for gas uh, jumped from five hundred dollars uh, to one thousand dollars <laughs> for a month. I mean, like, who can afford that? So people are moving away from those Scorpio things. Uh, from I don't know what they're gonna substitute it with, but Rahu North Node and Mars in Taurus. Taurus also rules um, anything that's above ground, but also rules uh, energy sources. And maybe they'll be starting to use energy sources more connected to nature from above. Maybe something will get developed. Maybe energy sources connected to plants. They already have such, but maybe there'll be like a boom in that. Maybe something will be invented. Maybe other different energy sources, a revolution, a breakthrough. Plus, don't forget this. This is happening in Taurus. Yes, a big revolutionizing, and there will be even rebellions and protests. Expect big. It's happening already around the world. Mars and Uranus is about protests, revolutions. This will be because of resources, because of the rising prices, because of money. It's easy to predict. We're seeing it already. I was talking about that from two, three years ago. If you go back to my videos, now it's just happening. And but also those three conjunctions are happening on the background of a constellation areas. They in the sign Taurus, but the constellation areas. We always have to merge both influences. And Aries is a very warlike energy. And I'm, I'm, I hope it's not some new kind of weapon, or, but it's more like areas. Maybe they can be escalation of war, or and every time I've seen Uranus, Mars. Conjunctions, either revolutions or wars. You know, the last time they were conjunct Uranus with Mars in Taurus was in 1855. That's when the Crimean War started, the same place where there is a war now. Uh, history repeats itself, and Jupiter was in a very similar place as it is now. Um, so, <laughs> fascinating stuff, you know. Let's see what happens. Maybe some kind of culmination, you know, you can never know for sure, but. Oh, interesting. So talking about, okay, let me, uh, we spoke, all right. But as well, so we can't, uh, unfortunately with finances, things are very shaky, but big opportunities as well, of new things that are being born, new financial ideas, and you have to be very quick and savvy, uh, follow your intuition, and it's usually be something very quick that you feel like this is the right thing to do because that's how Uranus and Mars act. Of course, around those days when the conjunction happens, two weeks before or a week after, be careful for traveling, for example, because it, it's just too uh, aggressive energy, too unpredictable. Be traveling when using any tools. Be, be careful, sorry, when you're using any tools. Be careful for accidents of any sorts. Mm, possibility of more explosions, but positivity, uh, possibilities of natural disasters happening. 
Uranus Mars can be earthquake when it's in Taurus. It can be in the constellation of Aries behind it can be fires. It can be tornadoes, you know, storms of any sorts, thunders, lightnings, you know, it can be like a lot of weather <laughs> and extreme kind of weather patterns. Just watch out towards the end of July, the start of August. But let's speak a little bit now more on the, on the personal level. Yes, in the world, it might feel overwhelming and exciting at the same time, scary because too many changes. The monetary system might collapse, uh, plus Mars will go retrograde for, six, for, for four months at the end of the year in the constellation of Taurus, in the sign of Gemini. We'll talk about that specifically, but that's again a big rehaul of the financial system and businesses, they can be shaken, plus Mars rules uh, the media. Uh, the news and so on, sort of Gemini. So there you'll see a big change is happening with media, maybe old faces falling off, new faces coming. Uh, but because it's also in the constellation of Taurus, the, the constellation behind, uh, and Gemini rules businesses and trades. So we combine Gemini and Taurus, like some big reinvention has to happen there. And again, I'm not, I can't say that the financial system will fully collapse, basically like there's no stock market anymore, whatever, but um, they can be, there will be something big expected, you know? And maybe it won't be one-off event, it will start from now and it's starting already, but it, it's, it's a big rehauling and changing there. But on a personal level, on a personal level, as I said, like incredible opportunities over the next few years, and the sooner you grab them, the more you can have, because Uranus Mars gives opportunity for very suddenly rising high. Uranus Mars in the North Node. This is sudden rises. Every time I've seen a person who has in their chart Uranus and North Node together, whatever they in that house, they have very sudden uh, rises of fortune, sudden rises and falls of fortune, but usually they can gain a lot through that. For example, my older brother has Rahu for the North Node with Uranus in Scorpio in his fifth house. Fifth house is gambling and he's made, sometimes he'll win $50,000 after two, three hours of gaming. <laughs> and uh, he's gained a lot more than his lost action, but sudden gains, you know. And it depends where this conjunction will fall for you. Check out my 2022 July videos on uh, Lada Duncheva channel. Or you can ch check it one by one sign and Astrola, the channel where it's only my videos. Oh, wow, sorry, <laughs> it's so exciting. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, to July the 4th, all my courses are off for 25%. That's the last time I'm putting them down this year. <laughs> and after that, they go to normal price. Plus we're starting a new course with Roman Collet, the father of primary directions in the current times about this ancient method of prediction, which he resurrected. And he will teach you the most precise method for prediction to the exact year, the most important events in your life. It's a six week course. It's, he's the best, best astrologer on that in the world. We, I work only with the best ones and he's one of my teachers. So if you wanna learn that method, that the ancient used to predict events specifically. And it's not difficult. The calculations are all done by software. <laughs> but he would explain what they mean to you. So come and join us. Anyway, going back to this, on a personal level, Uranus, Mars, and the North Node conjunction can indicate super powerful awakenings. Uranus rules the rising of the Kundalini. It's Uranus is the Eros <laughs> energy in us. That's why when you're having midlife crisis, Uranus opposing, uh, trans Uranus opposing NATO Uranus is when you start having, uh, let's say second teenage sexual <laughs> awakening type of thing. I'm almost there guys. <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's, so you can have like a very powerful awakenings because this rules basically the Eros energy, which is the energy of spiritual awakening as well, the Kundalini energy and Mars and Rahu can suddenly unlock it for, for some of you, sudden awakening. So you're sitting there. So towards the end of the month or even before that, or even after that, July and August, these are the two months, you can have like sudden, like, like a lightning strike, exactly how I describe you. Sitting there and you're like, now I, I realized something. Maybe you were stuck in a situation for years. 
you've tried what not. You've tried to think your way out of it. Maybe you are bonded to someone or something you, that you, it's, it's like a burden to your responsibility or you've been tied up and you don't even realize it's such a burden heavy around your neck. And suddenly you'll be either released and liberated by out of circumstances or you'd feel like, I can't, I feel like I'm stifling. These two energies, Uranus and the North Node and Mars, they want freedom more than anything else in the world. And to throw out the baby with the water. If it's not the right baby anymore, they're like, I'm trying it even the baby, you know. Sorry, that's extreme example. But it's like you, you can't breathe, you feel like you're suffocating and you want freedom. So people will be fighting and protesting for their freedom, for their human rights. Uranus is very much connected to human rights, human rights to food in Taurus, human rights to resources, human rights to accessible, sustainable resources. This is what all Taurus is about. That's a lot, a lot of the process and the rebellions will be about. But uh, on a personal level, it will be, I want to be free about something, especially on the material level, uh, especially some people might suddenly decide because Taurus is a very material sign of your work, your money, sustenance, and Working, working for the guy, you know, to pay your bills. So you might be like, I am fed up and I don't want to be connected to this lifestyle. Is this what life is about? Like sudden awakenings, like existential realizations and you make a sudden change, you quit the job, you leave a place of living. So this is Aquarians have to be more careful. The conjunction is in this fourth house, <laughs> but it's like, oh, suddenly uh, leaving a person that you feel that you've been too bonded by or too, restricted by so cutting the cords i always see uranus as something when uranus comes um especially if it activates something in your horoscope personally you can check on my personal transit calendar where you see all the transit if you see that you're going to have uranus transit of any sort over the next two months i mean this conjunction will revolutionize your life whether it's a trine if it's conjunction square or opposition uh, I mean, you'll feel it from one day to another. You'd wake up and suddenly you want to love someone. You'd wake up and suddenly you know you want to do something totally else. You'd wake up and suddenly you know you're in love with someone. <laughs> it's like that's fast. You're in this when it cuts something, when it decides something new to bring, and especially when it's with the North Node, it's in an instant. I fell in love on the Uranus transit, so I can tell you from one minute to the next, your whole life and values and your ideas of what you plan to do, they, they shift and you're like, what the hell happened here? You're like battling for years with certain feelings for someone and they're gone in a second. So a very liberating for some of you, very liberating from traumas as well. Uh, remember the South Node is in Scorpio, it's weakening here our traumas, releasing them, helping them diminish. Scorpio is our hidden traumas. So you can rediscover a new value a new sense of beauty, a new sense of what a, a Taurus is values, what you consider uh, the, the good things you want to do in life. This is Taurus, the pleasant things you want to do. So suddenly it might shift and you, you envision totally different things that you appreciate and you consider uh, important. And believe me, since one year, since the last almost like 10 months or even more values, people's values have shifted with the North Node actually since Uranus entered Taurus. So from 2019, 20, especially when it came values, Uranus in Taurus is trying to totally shift people's values. If before you consider valuable to have Birkin bags and travel, you know, uh, and you thought that you know, glamorous lifestyle of the Kardashians is what you value. So many people have turned around 118 degrees and discovered life in nature, outside of the big cities, in sustainability. So values are shifting and they'll continue, but now it will be the biggest one collectively and it's happening already, you know, on a personal level. So watch out these few months, you wake up and you like totally different things, totally different foods it might be, or you decide to go on a totally different way of eating. This is Taurus as well. Uh, your looks and appearances might shift total innovations. Also, I think in passion and design because Taurus is one of the signs connected to those things. They can be like a revolutionizing of the styles. So the music industry, the fashion, the beauty industries, they can be new trends that can very quickly revolutionize the 
um, you know, changes everything around so fast. Ah, so, and on a personal level, awakening, spiritual awakenings, eureka moments, aha, something becomes super clear for you. You download information in minutes, <laughs> in seconds. You, you wake up and you know the solution of a lifelong problem, for example. Uh, you suddenly have a brilliant idea. This is Uranus, eureka. Ah, and you jump to do it, Mars. Like, you're not going to wait around. You're so excited. Uh, it, it almost might feel to some of you like there is a speeding up of timeline, especially if Uranus is making a transit in your horoscope. Again, enter your birth detail at my birth chart, at my transit ca calendar. I'll put a link below. And it shows you only seven days for free, but you can pay for the next month is $6. And you'll see all your hundreds of transits that you're going to happen. If you see Uranus, Oh my God, <laughs> you're in for a spin. And uh, if, directly, if, if, if directly is going to influence anything in your horoscope. So spontaneous removal of super ingrained and unmovable old structures that you've been trying to can happen. Almost like Archangel Michael comes with the sword and cuts cords and puts you on a new path and sudden realizations and total shifts of perspective can happen as well. Big epiphanies, brilliant epiphanies. Uh, it's sudden removal of limitations, sense of freedom escalating and the need to. So people just like get rid of things, you know. <laughs> um, viral new trends will appear around that time and mass movements, revolutionary manifestations. What can be those viral new trends? I don't know, <laughs> something about nature, something about beauty, something about money, something about resources. I'll be very worried about supply chains still because Saturn in the square continues and it's activating this conjunction, supply chains, access to uh, any to resources and food can be disrupted. Uh, plus Uranus Mars, always electricity problems, so internet issues. Uh, watch out those companies connected to that as well. Uh, very often you're in the Mars and the North Node is connected to industrial accidents. Uh, and we talked about industrial accidents, storms, earthquake. If you can avoid more dangerous areas around that time, power cuts, electricity, electronics, risky situations with media, with the internet, electronics, and so on. Well, there you go, guys. Um, Shall I? I'm not going to mention the 12 signs. I did it already. No point, but exciting times. Catch this wave of powerful innovations that will change the world. And you can be on the crest of the wave in the next few years. <laughs> like I caught the last one in 2007 with social media. I immediately went on Facebook. I immediately went on YouTube. And I was one of the first astrologers. Now something new will come out. So maybe you'll be the next one. Thank you so much. Follow me on Astrolada if you want only my videos or on my other YouTube channel, Lada Dunceva. That's the main one where I also invite other astrologers, uh, only the top ones, <laughs> and again, all my content as well there. And check out my courses, which are 25% off till July the 4th. Love you. Bye.